Hi everyone, it's Candace Craw Goldman and this is quantumhealers.com. I am so excited. I get to spend some time with my friend David Manning here as we move into the Lions Gate. And I know, yes, it is my birthday. It is the day before Lions Gate and I hope to uh, premiere this either tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. I am gonna go out to dinner a little bit here and a little bit, or, um, or a late lunch as it were. Uh, but welcome David Manning, and, and the reason I'm so excited right now is, I know it's my birthday, but I have a present for you, a little one. Oh, cool, I mean, I, I feel so honored to be a part of your birthday celebration. So thank you so much for uh, asking, you know, suggesting this. Um, oh, it's, it's so exciting for me because <laughs> And I'm going to talk while I go get this little thing here. Um, you were so sweet. You were like, oh, it's your birthday. Let's not do it on your birthday. I'm like, are you kidding? It's exactly why I want to do it on my birthday, right? And, uh, yeah. And I wouldn't be doing this on my birthday. I'd be off to somewhere else. But yes, you would. Else. Yes, you would. <laughs> but, but here's one of the reasons I wanted to do this. Look. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So this is your new, your, the new addition to your family, huh? Well, one of them. I have him and his toothless feral mama. Oh, my God. So what are you going to call this one? Well, because my, uh, my last guy was Samson, and because they may very well be related, for all I know, out here <laughs> in the country. Um, and I, I said before the cat had even given birth. Well, here's this, this small story in a nutshell. Feral cat, get them all the time, trapped it. I had to trap it. It was wild. It was eating my chicken food and my bird seed. And I already thought that was weird. But sometimes when they're very hungry, they do that. Yeah. And in the cage, this very skinny little black and white cat, and it turned around a couple times and I, underneath its tail, I thought I saw a couple tufts, and you know, I'm I'm sending it off to get to get neutered. I figured a little skinny tomcat. Well, not only wasn't it a tomcat, it was female. Not only was it a female with very weird tufts of hair under her tail, <clears throat> she was pregnant. And my wonderful, wonderful vet, you know, some vets don't think twice about um, having the baby kittens go away, but. Uh, thankfully my vet is not like that because she's not and what I said was if I already knew I would have to take the mama why uh, we found out and there's a there's a fly in here and I'm gonna get that fly I don't know why I have to deal with the fly during this but pardon me because it might fly around that's the only reason I'm mentioning it um, I said if she has a little black male um, I'm gonna take him home and she did <laughs> so that's how i have that's how i have him too but i had to take her because she has no teeth Aww. she has no canines and no front teeth which, which explains the um eating of the bird seed and yeah. such and we're making friends she's very feral she's still a little distrustworthy but i thought this is be a perfect way to start talking about uh, the Lions Gate, and because you and I have a Lions Gate history, and we both have histories with black kitty cats, right? With black cats. So look, if I just do that, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. two, two black cats just there. So there's one and and the bigger one. I think Sammy's look. I think Sammy actually <laughs> stopped squirming to look at the cat there. He's act. Uh, that's cool. Oh, very cool. So you said he was my present. So you're going to package him up and send him over? You know? No, I just, you know, <laughs> I was just going to give you this because, I mean, I just, you know, I have the fondest, mem most fond memories of you. The first time you and I really got to know each other, you gave me a session. It was the Lion's Gate. And we contacted each other. And I said, David, I'm not sure I can do this because my Samson was dying in, at the vet's office. And I was distraught. And we did the session anyway, and part of that session was to send energy and healing uh, to Samson, who, <laughs> like, by the time the session was over, my vet is like, okay, something changed here. <laughs> and I had him for years afterwards, and you said, you know, you've had a black cat who was very special to you, 
I, I mean, I, when I was born, we had a black cat um, called Sooty. Uh, and uh, this, he was quite an elderly cat by the time I came along, but he helped me to learn how to walk because I would pull myself up, I would dig my hands into his fur and pull myself up and he would just stand there very patiently while I learned to balance with a cat as a, as a walking aid. So, and then another one came into my life a few years ago that reawoke the, the capacity for animal communication and um, nudged me in that direction. So, uh, so yeah, so, 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 and black cats are, are a spirit animal for me. Um, so this black yeah. cat, the one that came into my life a few years ago was a very small, he'd been underfed as a kitten, so he didn't grow to his full size, but so he was a small cat, but he'd be wandering around the apartment and from the, out of the corner of my eye, what I would see was a huge, you know, black panther, a puma, but it was just this little little cat. So he was there as a as a spirit guide, in a sense, to uh, to awaken something in me, and and that was a very profound uh, experience. He was only with me for a year, and then he was hit by a car. He had no road sense whatsoever. <laughs> um, but the grief of him of his passing was out of all proportion. You know, I mean, it was it was immense, and it put me in touch with the backlog of grief I had had as a as a family when I was growing up we'd had lots of pets but my family was so chaotic we could barely hold the humans in place let alone the animals so the animals would die very quickly or leave and I as a kid would took this as my fault you know this was my fault that these animals were leaving and it, and it really um there was a wound there in me that the death of this um little cat who called himself he told me his name was Merlin um he uh, his passing opened that wound up and then allowed a deeper level of communication with animals because I had closed down out of guilt and and grief around uh, the animals we had had as a children so or well, that I when I was a child well, thank you for telling me about all that. I'm going to, I'm going to put him, I've got a little uh, enclosure over here. I'm going to put him in there and assuming he doesn't uh, make it a, a ton of noise, we'll carry on from there. So give me He's a beautiful. <laughs> thank you for showing, thank you for introducing him. I've, I've, no, this is a dog mug actually, but not a cat mug. <laughs> I also had thought that, you know, perhaps you might have something to say about domestic cats and the lion-headed beings and uh, Lion's Gate and all of that coming up. It, I thought it might be a jumping off point just to talk a little bit about what you're going to talk about in your uh, offering tomorrow and what you sense is happening in the world right now here as we move into the Lion's Gate energy of 2020. What's going yeah. on in the world, my friend? What's going on? It's it's crazy, isn't it? It's just getting more and more crazy all the time. Um, we've got a bit of a heat wave here in the UK or where I live in the UK at the moment. So um, I'm spending a lot of time on the beach, which is my favourite place of all to be. And I feel very removed from a lot of what's happening. You know, unless I look at the news, I don't really connect with a lot of the stuff. Um, but there is a real sense of of the pinches sort of closing uh, and things becoming tighter and tighter, more and more regulations all the time. Media and governments are still promoting a huge amount of fear around uh, what's going on. And of course, the financial sledgehammer has yet to really hit, but but all of the, the measures that have been taken um, through the, the various lockdowns have cost governments a huge amount of money. And of course, that money comes from us, the taxpayers. So, you know, there's a lot waiting to unfold at that level. And then at the energetic level, which is where my focus is, and I've been told for years, you know, let go of this level because the world is due to fall apart. Let it fall apart. Don't give it energy. You're here to support uh, the unfolding of the new world and how you do that. I do that by energy work um, and focusing into those dimensions and those realms and reporting on what I see there. And uh, so that's my major focus. And it, more and more, it becomes easier to let go of 
all of the chaos and the drama in the world and to be uh, just ever more present, ever more easily present to what's unfolding in the energetic realms. And I keep saying this, um, but it's really important, I think, to let go of the drama because it can eat you alive in a sense. You know, if you give a lot of energy and attention and spend hours watching the news and conspiracy stuff on Facebook or whatever websites you're on, then that's a huge ask of your energy system. And the energy fields that are unfolding in the core of the earth at the moment and are downloading to the planet are so extraordinary and so beautiful and so generous um, and so deeply awakening and unfolding that if it's <laughs> when you're immersed in them you think oh, well how could I possibly miss them but when your attention is elsewhere it's very easy to miss all of that and we've chosen to be present on the planet at this point in time and it's an extraordinary gift to our overall soul evolution that we are present and available to these energies so my encouragement to anybody here is just don't miss the opportunities that are available, you know, and it doesn't take much. It's just sitting still for short periods of time on a regular basis. And you really start, your energy field starts to be entrained into these bigger, luscious energies that are available and present now. And, uh, everything just starts to unfold and dismantle what is ready to dismantle in your field falls apart all on its own and what is ready to uh, influx and download just lands and um and that's all beautiful and that's all very different for each one of us as individuals because the streams of energy that are coming in in the beautiful way that multidimensionality works are are tailor-made for each of our awakenings um and we're all vastly multi-stranded, multifaceted, multi-dimensional. So my huge backstory is very different than yours, but I'm sure we'll have got several crossover points in that backstory. So we feel like, you know, the first time we met, there was this instant heart connection. But, you know, we've all got these very different um, strandings. And a big piece of my stranding, and I'm sure yours, is... The lion-headed beings. Now, from my perspective, they told me when they first started showing up uh, in my uh, inner life um, that they are architects and designers and geneticists, and they travel the universe, kick-starting life in various dimensions, you know, or planets or star systems when it's ready. And they gather DNA from all over the universe, bring it to wherever and get things going and um and they told me that I was one of them and I think there are many of us that are one of them that have a good piece of our apparently junk DNA this is what scientists still tell us um is is that stranding but we are multifaceted and, and, and multi-hybrid um specimens that have been convinced of our humanness and there's nothing wrong with our human beingness it's a lovely aspect of what we are but it isn't by any means all of what we are and a lot of that other um off-world stranding is really coming alive now and the um influx is like the lion's gate which peaks tomorrow we're in the window very much now and you the energies are really really intense at the moment but um it peaks tomorrow and is still available for for, for for days and days afterwards, probably for a good chunk of August, actually. Um, and these energies are one of the major influxes in the year's cycle, from my estimation, anyway. Yeah. And they, you know, if we make ourselves available, if we take the time and make ourselves available to them, take them deep into our physical system, deep into the cellular structure, deep into the skeleton you really anchor them in and then anchor them through you and allow them to flow right the way through you into the core of the earth then um they'll make a difference they'll make a very real difference for us and it's better i think from my uh 
perspective to do that consciously rather than to uh to do it unconsciously because the energies are present for everybody but um if you're doing it unconsciously then you can sort of get sideswiped by the energies and, and sometimes knocked out or wiped out or accidents and all sorts of weird shit happens when you're doing this unconsciously rather than actively working with the energies and inviting them in does that make sense i just rambled it for yes no 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 <laughs> you know we get together for exactly for this for for this rambling we, we yeah, do yeah. well together like that while you were talking i was thinking about um you know this tendency of humans um we want to be safe, you know, and then there's this whole focus on safety that's sort of been, in my uh, estimation, hijacked. But some of what you were talking about, about even just like listening to news and everything, you know, I think people feel sometimes compelled to keep a focus on what is considered the news or, you know, whoever's version of the news is delivering the news because feeling that information, knowing what's going on will help keep them safe. And I was really struck by when you were speaking that if we could just let go of that way of thinking a little bit and, and find our, let's say, safety within our natural connection to nature and the energies that we're created from and by and swim in, wow, we could do so much better, but um, we've been trained to do otherwise, haven't we? Yeah, well, I mean, this is, the, it's, it's so strange. I mean, I watch the news. It's not that I have disconnected from all of that. I watch the news, but I do it for maybe 10 minutes each day. So I know what's going on, you know, the, the headlines. I don't look into the details and there's something really strikes me. And then I think, oh, there might be use in my exploring this a bit. Um, so it's not that I'm divorcing myself from from that world. I think it's always useful to know what's going on, but don't give your body and soul to it. Um, and as regards safety, it really is time for us to give up the idea that we can be harmed in a sense. You know, I've had lots of opportunities to die, lots of sort of near-death experiences in a, in a sense and as a child I used to have a lot of out-of-body experiences and that has uh, in a way continued so I know without any shadow of a doubt that I am not that I am independent of this body and this body is an amazing anchoring device and an amazing locating device for me in 3D physical reality um, but we don't die you know, the body will let go and return to the earth, but we, our existence is just ongoing. And of course, we have been trained by life's brutality over many, many thousands of years to fear what can happen to the body. And that's totally valid, but we are easily manipulated when we are very, very frightened big part of my training in this lifetime in terms of undoing that um, deeply entrenched conditioning that is part of the human condition is that I was diagnosed HIV positive in 1992 when there was no uh, there was no uh, there was no there were no drugs for that it was a death sentence in effect um, and I've had cancer twice uh, and each time is, a, is a, a really beautiful exploration of what it is to die. And I, you know, in, in the Buddhist tradition, I'm not a Buddhist, but in the Buddhist tradition, there's a lot of um, encouragement to die before you die, to really give yourself to the dying process so that when your body does die, you're not terror stricken and caught up in the fear because that will lock you into lower dimensions than is perhaps necessary. And I guess I've been through that um, in this lifetime too, to really surrender to death and recognize, oh, <laughs> there's no such thing. We simply don't die. Um, now with this disease that the planet is currently uh, experiencing COVID-19, 
it would be terrifying to be suffocating. You know, that's a horrible thing to experience. I'm not dismissing or denying that at all. But if you have as an underlying deep recognition, your eternal safety, if that is a part of your, the fabric of your reality, then a lot of the fear constructs in the body get unwound and you don't tend to have those terrifying experiences, um, even if your body is in the process of dying. Um, often when the body is dying, it will try and work through as much as is physically possible so that you can let go into more and more freedom rather than carrying another shitload of energy on into the next life. So people often will have apparently really messy, painful, frightening deaths, but it's done them a big favor because they've cleared all of that before they exit the body. So if you can find a way to feel deeply safe in your your eternality, and anchor yourself in that, uh, then that releases a lot of the, uh, the ancient patterning um, that is present in the body. And it is, you know, when you look at the, um, you look at a cliff face and you see the strata laid down over millions and millions of years of the planet's evolution, we are just the same. You know, we have that strata, our, experience lay down and lay down and lay down and this is what we're working through at the moment so that we return to our essence um so there's a lot for us to clear through and we're doing it collectively um and we're all at different places in that in that evolution we can do it you know we can speed up the process and do it quite quickly or we can move along quite slowly at the uh, at the level of the collective but it's uh, but it is an extraordinary process we're in how are you was, finding it then? How are you finding um, things at the moment? Yeah, I was just thinking about what you said about the lion's gate uh, being one of the major energy influxes. And <clears throat> so I actually did a session yesterday where I was part of the uh, two people uh, with Priscilla, who you know, Priscilla Lewis. We, were, we did a tandem session, meaning we went into a trance state in a connected way, and our mutual friend Hara Katsiki asked some questions. And when you were talking about the major energy points of the year, and that was a big part of the session that we did yesterday. We will be releasing that tomorrow on the Lionsgate proper too. Oh, cool! Some, That'll be lovely yeah. to listen to, huh? Yeah, sometime tomorrow afternoon, I think we'll be releasing it, um, assuming we get the editing done. Um, <clears throat> anyway. It, it's my, I was given kind of this vision of a big arc, a big arc where uh, the, this big energy arc where the beginning, the entrance of it was and is the lion's gate energy and that it takes us through all the way up through the fall where, and, and it was kind of like a bridge. And, and there were people, you, I, people we know, other people who are waking up, whether or not they're in this community or not, but people who are really kind of going, hey, wait a second, and sort of figuring out some of what's going on in the world uh, are on this arcing path that takes us to the end of the year. And there's much going on kind of underneath us, right? Like, and, and there was just chaos in these, these blah, 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 all this like going on down there. And my sense is that, that there's a, if not a conclusion, at least a crescendo <laughs> and something really big towards the, you know, the, maybe the winter solstice, you know, back in December somewhere. It just seems to me like, it's like, here we go. And, and, and we haven't even kind of I think we're, we have a lot more in store for us this year. It's a long way of saying that. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's an amazing year. You know, it's certainly turning out to be an amazing year. And back at the end of last year, I was told, okay, this was, it was on my birthday, actually, December the 7th. And I was, uh, was told on that day, I was meditating, excuse me. <clears throat> and I was told, everything changes now, nothing will be the same. And I thought that was a personal message for me. I hadn't realized at the time that it was a planetary message that because everything started and I started to hear 
little news things about this weird virus that was present, at, you know, before the end of the year. So it was already working then. And um, yeah, it's, uh, but, you know, we have been prepared for this. We've all known that something, there was something big in the air and perhaps we didn't see it this way, but this is how it's unfolding. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, there's a part of me that is very excited by this process. And as I say, I'm very aware that there is, you know, a lot of distress, a lot of hardship for people too. Um, and it isn't to make light of that. Uh, but in a very real sense now, each of us is getting to make our own choices and live by those choices. And there is, this has been going on for quite a while now, this separating out of the dimensions. Um, and so you see it very actively that people are now either living by fear or living by love. And that's the only choice there is, fear or love. And um, it's, it's powerful and it's profound and it's very beautiful and it's, you can't hold on to people um, and you can't make it right for people. You just have to let people go to their own choices, but be very clear about your own. Um, which again is why I say it's not useful to spend a lot of time trawling the internet, looking at conspiracy theories and all of this sort of stuff, because it just locks you into the polarized um, mental field and keeps you cycling probably, certainly possibly in, in fear when there are other opportunities very, very available now because the, the, the love that is unfolding, the energy of love, and all of this is stimulated by that. It's, it's just that we return to that as the base note of our being. Um, and we've moved a long way from that. And now we're getting to, um, to strip away all, and, all of the layers of conditioning that have locked us into very, very fearful outlooks on life and find at our core, we are simply that. Um, it's just love and it's, um, it's beautiful, but it doesn't look how we thought love would look either. You know, love, can sometimes be quite harsh and very direct and very straightforward. It isn't soft and fluffy at all. Sometimes it is, but not, um, not often. Another thought occurs to me as I'm listening to you, I have this real sense and, and it was confirmed even in the session exploration yesterday. The word untethered keeps coming back to me untethered, but untethered in a lot of different ways. I think there's an untethering um, happening in, in multiple layers, untethering of constructs, social constructs, uh, yeah. personal constructs, uh, energetic things. But, but I even feel as if, um, and I keep getting this feeling like, you know, you've seen the the models of the solar system and how it, you know, the planets and go and all this. And I feel like there's been an untethering even also of that, like, like of that, you know, we're such tiny little portions of that, but it feels like what so many of us are experiencing are, is an untethering within an untethering on top of an untethering. And, and that, that energy as I was making my way, as there was this very, this was the, the part that felt good to me uh, about some of the, the chaotic and still very difficult to categorize uh, events and things coming online was people, for me anyway, people like you, others like you who really try to see the best about what's um, happening to look at the opportunities that we have in front of us to help create a better world. Even though we too have been untethered, something about the unification of that as a goal, love and uh, justice and sovereignty and creating something new and just letting all that crap go that you can't fix things that are that yeah. just so terribly past being um, fixable and, and, and moving forward with trust. I, 
I'm, I get, I'm getting some real goosebumps right now, getting ready to thank you for being in the world because I'm, I'm able to be untethered and continue to move forward because I have my connection to you and others. And, and that's been so important to me as we're going through 2020. And I think that, that, I mean, that's so beautiful what you're saying there, because this connection we have as a field of light um, is so important. And we, we came to this planet with an intention. Um, and I think many of us came eons and eons ago with an intention that we would be here at this time, um, anchoring fields of light. And we have gone through very, very convoluted journeys over <laughs> vast periods of time. Um, and now, as I say, all I'm seeing is that all of the unconditioning is falling, or all of that conditioning is falling away. We are being, um, as you say, untethered, um, set free, in effect, because we are totally bound by the conditioning, the patterning that we have taken on board and belief is us. And it isn't. It just isn't what we are. Um, and so what is unfolding is stupendously beautiful. Um, and the more and more we do this, then, and I, you know, this happened years ago when we were doing some work together and I saw your energy field as being this huge vast field of light that was holding space for the whole of your state in effect now that's happening more and more that as we awaken and um, come into a, a deep alignment with our purpose um, we recognize that a major part of our purpose is purely energetic rather than about writing a book or anything out in the world particularly and there might be something out in the world but the primary purpose for each of us is in the energetic realms and we simply open up to what we are and ground vast amounts of light through us into the core of the earth and on the surface of the planet and this is happening now there is a network of light being anchored by people all over the surface of the planet and that network from my experience my seeing is getting stronger and stronger all the time um so it becomes easier to anchor into that. Um, it becomes easier to be touched by that and to feel that if you're beginning to awaken, if you're starting to search, then those energies are very present to help and support you. Even if you don't think anybody in your town or village um, is on the same path of seeking as you, you can simply energetically connect to that vast field of light that is now anchoring strongly on the planet and be nurtured and supported by that and i think pretty quickly that network of light will lead you to the people in your location that you can best meet um, because it is tricky the process of awakening is is always tricky often you'd have to let go of a lot of your um family and the friends you've had for for years because they're not awakening at the rate or in the time that you are and they may do you know in two years time whatever but you have to tread your own path and sometimes that feels really really lonely now um there are many of us all over the world you know it's uh, it's lovely when you were speaking i was I don't know, what is it about you that just triggers all these beautiful <laughs> vignettes of, of memory and possibility and um, almost like plays, I think, L little plays happen in front of me. And so while you were speaking, I was thinking about conversations that we've had before and conversations that, you know, you've had and that we've talked about when, when you've gone through um, some of your radiotherapy. And some of what I'm noticing, the, the, the change in the way the sunlight is coming to the planet and what's going from energies behind the sun through our sun and to us. And while you were talking, all of this is like coming together and it's making me 
really think about what you personally went through with all of your um, health adventures, but particularly this last one where you embraced that energy, that radio therapy energy. And I caught this really huge sense that that that, that could have right as you were finishing up all of that stuff in preparation for what is happening now with those energies coming in that way. I'm getting a lot of energy going through my body right now just thinking about it. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm talking about it in a way that's understandable for people to listen, but it seems like you were, I don't know, uh, tuned up, uh, set up, uh, altered with your experience particularly and particularly the way you energetically embrace that experience yeah, to yeah. be able to then broadcast more of this in some of your work with others what do you think yeah and it makes me think because you are often writing about the man with the head of the sun aren't you i mean and and that always strikes me as as really really beautiful and i think it just speaks to the fact that the sun is so so significant in our in our lives and we were disconnected from from that from the acknowledgement that the sun is the central pivot around which the whole of this solar system revolves you know it is the center um, of life and of course so we were disconnected from that and the earth in terms of what we what we worshiped what anchored us and forced into other types of worship uh, which from my estimation have sort of been part of the binding that has kept us very limited. <clears throat> so now we're coming back to that recognition that the sun is, well, the sun isn't an external force. It's an internal force. And a few months ago, it made it, but when, what point was that? Was that the equinox or no, it was the summer solstice, of course. Um, the sun made it very, very clear to me that it wanted to uh, come to rest back in the place in our body that it's meant to be glowing, and that is the solar plexus. Um, and of course, we've been disconnected from that. We've closed that down. That's become, a, for most of us, a really messy, painful field of wounding. Um, but the sun is meant to radiate in that place in us. We are meant to radiate beautiful golden light in the place of the sun, the solar plexus. Um, so there was a beautiful, amazing activation of that um, on the summer solstice, June the 21st or 22nd, it, it changes, um, of this year. But um, yeah, the radiotherapy I had last year, um, and it's not a pleasant experience, but I was told again, and I've had a bit of training around this about not resisting the things that we are naturally inclined to fear. And of course, the doctors, nurses, you know, they tell you how painful or unpleasant something is going to be because that's part of their job to, to warn you. And, and uh, it's easy then to get locked into the fears and create a barrier to, uh, to the impact of what is coming in, whether that's a chemotherapy or a in this case, a radiotherapy. And, uh, but I had the most beautiful experiences with the radiotherapy because I was told just focus on it as being an intensified beam of sunlight, which is what it is in effect. And so I did. And <laughs> very quickly, I found that every time I was receiving radiotherapy, um, I would be in a state of bliss. It was one day when there was a lot coming up in my system about... Um, you know, some deep purging happening and where I felt as if I was under attack, but that was just more about what was clearing rather than the, um, the actual experience, but the, the state of receiving the radiotherapy, and it didn't mean that I didn't, um, that my sin didn't, didn't get burnt. It did get burnt, but I think it really helped to minimize the, the, the negative impact of that treatment and maximize the positive impact. And there came a day then before my treatment was scheduled to finish when I was told very clearly by my body, okay, we're done now, we've had enough. Any more is gonna be destructive, that's it. And so I told my medical team this, that I wasn't gonna have any more treatment and they laid it on really heavily. Oh my God, you know, 
this is this is a disaster. Your type of cancer proliferates really easily, you know. And I came out of that having held my ground and, and was having a panic attack. And the first person I phoned was Candice and I was sitting in, in the car park of the, uh, of the hospital and, and Candice talked me through something. And it, but it took a while for that fear to dissipate because it was a powerful bro- process just to stand up to the medical profession who were telling me you're gonna die and say, actually, this is what my body is telling me. Um, and that was a really beautiful beautiful statement in effect but um but you helped immensely with that one so thank you so much uh. oh my gosh my heart is so connected to yours um i i just adore you thank you so much i was really thinking what you were saying too about the solar plexus because that was part of what happened with me yesterday too as a matter of fact Priscilla was speaking uh, about what she was experiencing and all of a sudden I'm like boom and something hits me like right here and it opens and it really felt like there was um, a portal uh, and it was solar plexus and I, I was thinking so much about what what you're speaking of just right now too how messy that of an energetic place that is for people and what about right now i mean the place of our own sense of power and with all of the controls um being like you said <laughs> more and more and more uh, of that is happening yeah. in the social constructs but i think some of this energy of the eight eight um gives you the opportunity to really accept some of this cosmic solar energy coming through right here and just clear some of that stuff away and get get a beam and get a laser straight focus about who you really are outside of these social constructs that seem very powerful right now and they you know they are affecting all of us Uh, that's to be to be sure but we have an opportunity to always, no matter what the energy is, no matter what the situation is, getting a beam on the energy and and sort of reading it, no matter if it's radiotherapy or government control or uh, cosmic energy or whatever to, to ride with it and, and, and benefit from it and, and see it as a positive thing rather than, yes, always kind of resisting it. And I think some of that may be happening right now and is really going to happen and intensify tomorrow. And you're going to help people with your energy call. What do you sense is going to happen, um, at least the direction of it, for tomorrow? Listen, I think the point you're making there is really, really important and really powerful this um because i think there are more and more rules and regulations coming down the pipe for 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 many of us you know and it's very easy to get triggered by that and to move into fear and deep deep resistance which it's expensive it costs a lot of your energy and there i was shown because i was asking about this a couple of months ago what are we going to do about this increasingly regulated world that we live in and i was told Take no notice of it. Don't allow yourself to be contained by the regulations because regulations and laws are, like everything else, energetic constructs that get applied to the landscape, to the the terrain upon which we live. And, you know, it's interesting. Each country has its own laws and regulations and you can move across a border and experience a completely different field of energy in one country to the next. And I experienced this in an amazing way, moving from Pakistan into China some years ago on, on a journey I was on. And the difference just in a few feet where one set of laws applied and another set of laws applied. And these are human constructs, but we tend to be bound by those constructs. So here's a way through that. You don't have to be bound by the constructs. You can, this is what we're shown to be, just go into meditation and look for those constructs as energetic um, structures. Now, this is part of my speciality, if you like, is perceiving structures. Um, And so it's easy for me, but anybody can do it. Uh, but you just look for the energetic structures and often you can feel them. You can feel the tightness. 
or you simply set an intention um, to allow the energetic structures to be and to give up resisting them and allow your field to not be contained and made small by those structures. Simply allow your field to expand out through all of those structures. So again, you are allowing yourself to be vast rather than to be contained. It's the same as being untethered. We are uncontained by what is happening as our evolutionary process. Despite what is happening in our political and social worlds, this sense of containment and confinement is increasing. And so you don't need to go on a march or write a placard or go into massive resistance and fear and anger. You simply allow your field to expand through all the constructs and decide to be uncontained. And that's really, really important. And then my experience is you find ways to avoid the constructs. So you find yourself in places where those laws aren't as <laughs> tightly regulated and applied as as others um and my life here on the coast is very much like that it's you know there's a lot of of um freedom here that perhaps isn't available uh in the cities or something but um, yeah. but and it's a way that preserves your energy it preserves your sanity because it's very easy to get caught up in the grind of hating or resenting the government or whoever is applying the uh, the lockdown rules and regulations, you know? So, um, so yeah, that's... You know, you know that part of Star Wars, that, that one part in Star Wars, the original Star Wars, when uh, um, he says, you know, these are not the droids you are looking for, you know, and the, the, the guards want, you know, the, to, to, to take them away. Oh, no, these are not the droids we are looking for. I have found that to be such an interesting way to go into any place that seems to be set up to, I haven't, I haven't covered my face yet. It hasn't happened yet. I haven't, I have not done it. It, it wasn't, it, there was a time when some of the grocery stores all um, here uh, a week or so ago had a nas nationwide mandate to do that. And I kind of went in thinking about that, you know, this is, uh, this is not the unmasked person you're looking for or whatever. And so far, nobody, nobody, not once has said anything to me. And I've talked to some other people who, you know, are concerned about freedoms and, and other things and maybe go in with a little more trepidation and have had a different experience. But I think we've, even here in Kansas too, I think it was only about four days before mostly the grocery stores went, yeah, we're not going to get away with that here. So we're, we're going to stop trying to enforce that. Um, and, and still, most of the population are still doing that. There's a lot of, um, a lot. There's a number of us who are taking a different uh, look at that, a different approach to that. But I, I feel like I'm in a pocket of freedom here myself. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about something else that... Uh, it's so interesting that the information that just comes at me in waves from your energy field, it's always been that way. Today, it's, uh, I'm looking at, we're almost an hour in, in talking already. I, I could easily talk to you for another, another hour or two, but I'm going, I'm going to go to lunch here pretty soon. But I want to ask you this because, you know, when you were talking, we were talking about the radiotherapy and the solar plexus and all of this. One of the things I just made an offhanded Facebook post a day or so ago asking about, hey, anybody out there craving salt? And I got a pretty significant response back for some people saying lately, actually, yes. And I have felt this entire year and moving into even the latter part of last year where our, um, salt baths are, have been very, very, Epsom salt or just regular salt baths have been a very important part for me to clear my system. And I always think of you on the coast and swimming. And I know you put yourself in, into the salt water all the time. And suddenly, as you were speaking, I'm getting this sense that there's even a connection of that. The, the solar plexus, the salt, the solar energy, and maybe the body being like a battery or an antenna or something. There was a lot of, 
uh, people who said, yes, just lately, I'm eating lots of crisps and chips and salty things and then, um, and then wanting some massive amount of water. And what do you think? Are you participating in anything like that at all? I'm not eating more salt, um, but I swim every day. Uh, and, you know, I'm in the water for often quite a long time time and in that time i'm always aware that i end up drinking quite a bit of seawater you know not not drinking it but it, it ends up being ingested and so i take on board a lot of salt but there is something and i don't want to swim in fresh water i mean i'll swim in fresh water i love to swim so i'll swim wherever i can but but i love i just love swimming in the sea i mean and i swim with a group of swimmers here we swim all through the year even in the winter when it's really quite cold um but it's just the most, the most beautiful thing. And, I, and I, I'm aware that it's very, very much a part of what keeps my field buoyant, literally, that the salt water does, um, has a very purifying and cleansing effect. But there is something about us. We are remembering our battery-like quality, I think, that we are creators of our own energy and I think this is part of the next phase of our, our evolution that we you know the sun is a an energetic powerhouse um we are that too we are fundamental fundamentally we are systems that outpour a vast amount of energy and I think that's what makes us very attractive to other <laughs> races perhaps um, and manipulatable uh, when we don't recognize that when we don't fully when we're not fully cognizant of that when we're not fully owning that and for the you know I'm not saying I am fully owning that I am taking baby steps yet too as in, in regards of what is possible but I think that's where we're heading now is that we become so much more aware of the just the, the value of what we are, the extra, you're just trying to catch that fly, aren't you? <laughs> um, and yeah, it's unbelievable. I think there is genuine currency um, as to our value at some universal level. And again, it's not to get caught up in that either, because if you start worrying about, you know, the off-planetary races, you, it's just another field of... of um, of fear that gets engendered. Um, I did want to talk a little bit, I mean, I, I want to talk to you at some point, and I know we're running out of time here, but about this man with the head of the sun that you keep, that keeps cropping up. What is your sense of that then? I mean, is it just the sun that you are being switched on to the solar field of light? What do you think? <sighs> Yes, <laughs> a small a small answer. Yes, uh, you don't often surprise me with a question. This one's a little surprising for me, but but thank but you, you for asking. Have, you must have considered. Yes, because he keeps cropping up. Huh? Yes, he does, and 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 quite a lot for a while, and has been a little uh, quiet uh, for the last little bit. My sense is there's a. Um, this is some form of soul connection, uh, either a guide or a group. Uh, maybe he's, wow, and just now the light up here just went, <laughs> um, where it, it, it's, there's some initial contact being made in a way that I know that I can handle it. it he, he reminds me this last... Um, and it is very, very much a male presence. This last time that he showed up, he really seemed like Rod Serling. I mean, just like in the, in the suit and tie and, and just sort of a, um, an energetic presence, but not a, um, not a manipulative one, not a commanding one, not even really a teaching one, an illuminating one, simply illuminating and, and giving, me and those around me because so so 
So, you know, uh, in so many um, experiences, whether they be sessions or visions or whatever, very often what happens is there's an angelic or there's a guide or whatever, and there's advice given and, and things like that. And this is so different. This is so different because this being is so powerful. And every once in a while, there's a statement made or something by him, but it's, it's typically enigmatic. Sometimes um, it's a kind of mystery or uh, mysterious or a clue of some kind, but the head is such an illuminating thing, and there's never, ever, ever uh, the slightest bit of, uh, of interference or even um, this idea that that they have a right to tell to that and I, I'm saying they, but it's he. He's like the he's like the figurehead of a bigger bigger something, um, and and they would, and he won't ever even presume to offer some any kind of advice or even really direction. Simply to just say, look at that. You know, and this thing or whatever thing it is, is in my world, my creation, my space, not brought by him, not created by him, not offered by him. None of those things, none of those things, simply extra wattage in my own uh, experience realm that allows me to see a little bit more and um, any, any attempt or opportunity i could just feel this any sort of come over here and answer some questions for me or come over here and help me to do this or i need you to show up now or whatever like that is met with uh-uh that's that's not our that's not our connection here that's not our setup it's a very interesting i've never felt anything quite like it and i'm still puzzling out all of what it is it does seem to be connected to solar energies it does seem to have some sort of time travel component and i'm still working it out <laughs> but thank you for asking uh you're still muted somehow maybe it's your no, there you are here we go i was just saying that's really beautiful and it's lovely to hear you say that because we are solar energies that's more and more what i realize and and yeah. when i'm doing energy work with somebody uh it's not that i'm a great seer but i end up seeing a lot of what's happening in somebody's field only because the light the energy that moves through me into their field illumines stuff it just lights it up and it, it's like, oh, <laughs> and so it becomes easy to see things when there's a brighter light present. And it's not, as I say, that I'm a great seer. It's just that the light shows things up and then it becomes easy to uh, perceive them and work with them. And that's, um, and that's beautiful, I think. Uh, I think that's, I love that idea that it isn't a, a place you can go for answers or guidance. It's just... Because in the end, that's all we need is the illumination. It's all there within us if we right. take the time to um, to shine the light on things. So. Right. And I think right now when people are finding, um, and, you know, how wonderful it is that the solar plexus is this, you know, if there's, if there's a sun in us at all, here it is, yeah. right? You know, yeah. the yellow uh, bright place in here and, um, you know, finding our own way and not always looking to others for answers, I think is an important way that we get ourselves out of kind of the mess that we're in. But at the same time, you know, sticking with others, you know, connecting all of these lights just makes, makes our light shine so much brighter. And, um, and you, you're so brilliant at that, um, David, and connecting so many people in your energy calls. And um, I can't wait to join you for tomorrow's um, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to get this show out before then so that people can cool. find you. Um, I don't know how when your cutoff is, but I, I'll try to get it up before then. Tell everyone how they can find you and how they can find and join your call tomorrow. Oh, so my website, thank you, Candice. My, um, my website is www.davidmanningenergywork.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook as David Manning Energy Work. Uh, and I run, at the moment, weekly teleconferences, and they're easy to find on my website or on the Facebook page. 
and tomorrow's is about the lion's gate and from my perception now there is a reconsecration happening in our relationship with the earth we have been deeply disconnected and wounded in that and um there's a really really beautiful reconsecration a re sacredization is that the word it is now um of of our relationship our intimate relationship with the earth that we have been largely disconnected from and there is something also extraordinarily magical happening in the core of the earth um which is all linked to to everything you know i mean it's it's just uh an extraordinary time we find ourselves in. Always on the calls, there are unexpected energies come in, the lion-headed beings hold space with us, but we'll be working very much with the energy of the sun and the galactic center, the great central sun. And some years ago in, in, uh, in Berlin, actually, I was asked, will you be an emissary of the great central sun? And it was like, well, what the fuck does that mean? Um, but it is this, that we, we recognize actually we are always are connected to that because that's what we are. Um, and we can't go anywhere even if we pretend we, ha we, we are, are separate and disconnected. So we're all in effect emissaries and ambassadors of that. Um, we're all aspects of that. And we're just coming back into the memory of that. And these huge cosmic influxes that we are in the process of receiving now are serving simply to take us back to that, to rem remind us of that. And um, it's an extraordinary gift to be alive at this point or to be on the planet at this point in time. I am at the risk of taking us on and on and on even further. I, I just have to say this because it was probably the second most powerful bit of energy that has come through you today is simply by mentioning Berlin look at what has recently happened in Berlin. Look at what Berlin has represented uh, before the, the, the division and, and, yeah. the, and the, the control and, and the German history, which I have recently written about. And apparently I need to write more about. Uh, that's very, very clear to me. But unbelievable that you would have gotten, not unbelievable, but thank you for the gift of telling me that you got that while in Berlin. You know, you could have just said some, some years ago, I did, but you said some years ago in Berlin and my whole field just is going, it's just making all these other connections and talking about how powerful um, this, this finding all of the different ways that we are energetically connecting and our light filaments like this and uh, no, no accident at all that this um, request and idea came while you were in Berlin. What an incredibly powerful place. Uh, in Let's meet in Berlin. Now too. Oh, let's God, can we? <laughs> oh, I, I just let's do because beautiful Hara lives there anyway. And I have yeah, enjoyed yeah. being in Berlin. And uh, it's and, a great city. We need to do a workshop in Berlin. That's where we should do our, our, yeah, our, what, our joint workshop. Huh? When I can fly without, uh, you know, something over my head, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, hey, listen, I have to ask you one question. How did your um, film uh, workshop go? Because Oh, no, I, no, that hasn't happened yet. That's oh, happened, oh, oh. Let me think, from the 17th to the 21st of August. It hasn't happened. Yeah. Well, I knew I wasn't going to make it one way or another, but um, I, I would so love to catch up with you after that's over and hear how that went, because I always dream about coming to visit you, and I would have loved to have done it then. Um, uh, and sometime in the future, we'll have to make it Yeah, happen. yeah, you will. You will. And and maybe, because Berlin is just a short, a short hop and a skip from here. So, sure. Uh, so we can do it all, huh? I would love to do that someday. Thank you for uh, making my birthday so very special, David. Oh, thank you for including me in your birthday. It's uh, yeah, I love you very much. So it's 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 a joy to uh, joy to be with you. I hope I you have a wonderful, too. wonderful rest of the rest of your of your day. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. Lots of love. Huh? You take okay. care. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And thanks, um, everyone. Yeah. Till next time. Bye. Bye bye.